Yo guys, Pinkor here, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Two things before we get started. First off, today is the last day to register for the chance at the 1000 RP prize pool. It ends tonight in the next 10 hours, so don't miss your chance. Next, this video isn't the usual highlight video. It is a highlight game from my stream last night, and it was one of the more perfect Shaco games I played. I was very consistent and kept lanes pushed and did pretty much what I was supposed to as my champion. I wanted to bring you guys this video to help those of you learning Shaco. So with that, let's get started. Here, you'll see me trying to do my best to trade with the Akali. Akali is a hard champion to trade with as when you get into auto range of her, she can Q and auto you for a good burst of damage. My plan is to get my health somewhat low to try and bait her into the boxes. I do have pots, so I can, can heal back up as best as I can. Yet, it is around 3 minutes into the game, and that's around the time a jungler finish their, finishes their buff clear and is going to get gank. You can see a Nidalee coming in for the gank where I dodge the spear and Akali flashes into the boxes. I try to get an extra auto in, but deceive away knowing that the animation would have gotten me killed. Our Zareth TP's in, looking to help fight off the gank, and Kha'Zix is coming in from the jungle, so it seems like they'll be able to clean up the fight. Here, there's a big wave that I backed leading to push to my side. I knew I had the gold to buy boots, so I went back, bought them, and walked back. I want to try to save my TP for any fights that happen on the map, or in the case that I get bursted down and need to TP back to lane later. I got back just in time to get the XP from the cannon creep dying, and not missing many other creeps. I'm pushed up a bit past river now, looking to try and bait the level 6 Akali into my box trap. Knowing that she's an assassin, Akali wants to jump in and get kills to try to snowball into the mid game. I try to be that bait for her, wanting her to jump into my boxes. The Nidalee ends up coming from our jungle, just stealing our jungle's red buff, and looks to gank me. She misses her spear, but still jumps in on me. I sit still, tanking her on top of my boxes, knowing that I have more boxes to move over to if I get too low. The Akali flashes onto my boxes again, allowing for a free kill on the Nidalee and for me to get away for free. As laning phase progresses, it seems the Nidalee has given up on top lane. Having Hextech Revolver now, I'm able to get a good burst combo with auto shift Thunderlords to get the Akali down to half HP. At this point, I want to be an annoyance to this Akali. I want to poke her as much as I can with Shiv to make her want to jump in on me on my boxes. If she lets the lane continue as it is, I will just poke her down until she dies or until she backs. As we push over to her turret, she still hasn't backed and has low HP. I see that my Hextic Revolver, Ignite, and Thunderlords are just coming off cooldown, meaning I have a good round of burst to get off when I can. She is scared that I'm pushing up onto her turret, so she uses her Shroud to go invis. As she has no getaway anymore, I allow for her shroud to wear off and then go in with my deceive. I get my auto ship Thunderlords off with Ignite being a bit overkill, then ulti to lose tower aggro, successfully tower diving the Akali. With that last push top lane, I wasn't able to take my tower, but my team has been doing well and was able to take the bot lane tower. When your bot laners are finished with the first tower, you want them to go to dragon and then rotate to the top lane to take the turret there. As a top laner, you want to move over to bot lane due to the main objective now being on top side of the map. Even though I don't currently have TP up, it is still good for me to rotate bottom. With this pressure, I apply bot lane, my team has a chance to take objectives for free. The key factor in this is if the enemy jungler sees you as a big enough threat. If you're shoving in bot lane, as you see me doing now, and are able to be successful in taking turrets, there's a chance that the enemy will send people bot lane to try and deal with your pressure applying. Pressure is a key success in winning league games, and I suggest you go check out a video Scar recently did with Acer on map pressure. It gives a good demonstration of the concept with good visuals and good explanations. Coming back after being, you see one of the biggest reasons why I love Protobelt. It's able to full clear a wave when an enemy is pushing it on the turret. This allows for me to get a lot of free damage off too, as the Akali is in the wave to tank the full burst of the Protobelt. I plant a box behind her as the tower gives vision of her, getting me a free kill with the Ignite being overkill again. After killing the Akali, I decide to continue to push the lane. This might be one of the few mistakes that come up this game. I have a big creep wave stacked up, pushing the enemies in him. I have a decision to make here. 
Do I let the wave push, allowing for your colleague to deal with it by yourself while I walk up to take the mid tower? Or do I keep pushing, trying to 1v1 the Akali and take the inhip tower? I decided to try to 1v1 the Akali. Here you see her jump in on me. I walk away, allowing for her to ult on me again, and then I deceive to my boxes. She continues on me, and then jumps in on my boxes, and I kite her through them. I throw my clone back, leashing it at the max tether range, then have it help me kill her as she flashes back in the boxes and dies, getting me the free kill. I'm scared that there are other people coming, so I go back as soon as I can. This 1v1 didn't really get us much except a kill, seeing as the team in top lane all died. This is very bad because the enemy team scales very well and free kills will only accelerate their snowball. Seeing as my team hasn't gotten the top tower yet, I look to continue pressuring the bot lane. This time though, the enemy team sends Yasuo bot lane to deal with me. This fight comes down to one key movement. You see the Yasuo start the fight with a dash from the bush and continue to use his Qs to get his uh, Q stack up. I kite him back in the box that I placed a few seconds earlier, fearing him as he's knocking me up, and this stops his only chance at activating his ultimate. I ignite and ulti, chasing him down with my ult to get the kill. I'm too low to push, so I go back and decide to take back my top lane, seeing that my team has finally destroyed the top lane tower. I see that the enemy team is shoving down mid. I leave top lane and plan to flank them. By the time I get there though, they're leaving through the bot side of mid lane. I decide not to chase, placing a box at their closest entrance to the mid lane. I plan on pushing down lane, uh, mid lane and taking the tower. Remember this box as it will be key to a kill in a minute. We're able to take mid tower, then look to get vision of Baron. We have a mountain drake, so if we get a pick, we'll be able to start and maybe get it. This enemy team fears this, so they try to contest our vision. I look to get a pick on the Nidalee, but she's too tanky, so I back off of her. I place myself at a spot that's uncommonly warded, and try to look for a flank if a team fight starts. I jump in behind, putting a box in the bush to stop anyone from retreating that way. I do mess up my movement though, and get hit by the Lulu's ultimate, giving Yasuo activation for his own ultimate. I continue my flank on the Kog'Maw as best as I can, then run as I'm close to dying. I survive barely with the Sona Hill and a dodging a Nid Spear, finishing off the fight with our team winning as the Kog'Maw dies to the box I placed a minute ago. As Dragon comes up, we look to try and get it. Our Xerath is dead for 30 seconds, but their own jungler is down too, so we go for it. The enemy team collapses on us and we fight back, going one for one, killing Yasuo and losing Trist. We end up getting greedy, continuing the dragon. They collapse on us again. We get the dragon, but lose Kha'Zix, our jungler. This gives them the free chance at doing bearing, and as they have a Kog'Maw, they do it extremely fast. We look to contest their Baron, trying to steal it if anything. It is only Xerath and I, so we can't really go all in for kills. Akali tries to fight us back, stopping us from contesting it, but ends up dying in the 1v2. With them having jungler though, they have the smite to secure it, but I still try to jump in, almost stealing it. I kinda till here, knowing how well I've done this game, and can see how this game is falling out of my control. The Kog'Maw is just too strong, and the free pill from Lulu makes it seem like it, they could just 2v5 her entire team. Knowing that they have Baron, I try to go bottom to continue the push from earlier. In my mind, I thought that the only person who wouldn't have Baron would be the Akali, but in the end, Yasuo didn't have it either. I continue pushing the lane, planning on leaving as soon as I see the Baron up minions, knowing that they would have sent someone to contest me. I do this to try to get a 5v4 in the mid lane for the chance of winning a team fight. The Yasuo did, doesn't have Baron though, so my plans fall through. He all ends me getting his ultimate off this time. With IE and Phantom Master, the only way for me to beat him would be in a box stack, but since I don't have one ready, I have to run, barely surviving the fight. A minute goes by and in the end the enemy team didn't end up shoving mid. They sent their incredibly strong Kog'Maw down mid with Lulu while Kha'Zix was top lane trying to defend against Akali and Nidalee. He dies and they continue to push top lane. To try and stop the bleeding of her base, I look to all in the top two people top lane as soon as possible. I do this so that their team has to make a split second decision of whether to walk up and help their teammates or to continue pushing their own lanes. They end up pushing their own lanes while our team goes in all in on the Nidalee and Akakali. We make quick work of the Akali and Sona and I chase down the Nidalee. 
she survived with a slither of health. While I figure it would be better to walk mid and deal with the people pushing into our base rather than chasing her down for a free kill. I come out behind the Kogma and Lulu. Lulu panic ulties herself while Kogma runs after our support. We're able to take the two of them down, trading two for one, saving our inhibs while Nidalee takes her jungle. I walk up to contest her though. I see a box I placed earlier and plan on using it uh, if she walks that way. I close the second path that she could take by placing a box in the bush. She walks in the box that I just placed and even though she has red trinket on, it doesn't disable the box until they've gone through their fade time. So I'm able to get her uh, get off my combo while she's feared, killing her. After stopping the bleeding of our base, we try to push mid. We should be grouped, not so split up though. Our Tristana is bottling by herself, trying to push out the waves, but she should be mid with the rest of the team so we could fight together. The reason that she should be there rather than bot lane is because there are creeps at mid inhib that we can take the tower with. But with her bot lane, our Zerath and Kha'Zix leaving, it looks like we're just going to take the jungle camps. We're incredibly split up again and we end up starting fights we shouldn't have. We walk in one by one, dying to the Kiting Kogma, unable to get a free kill on him. In my mind, I feel if we were all stacked up, we would have been able to kill the, him and Lulu. After that, Yasuo would not have had someone to activate his ultimate since the Lulu already used her ultimate, so we would have gotten away with only a few casualties. But the fight didn't turn out that way, and we ended up losing off that last team fight. In the end, it seemed like the game fell out of my control. Shaco isn't a champion that can walk in and one-shot anyone he chooses. It takes precise planning and a little bit of luck at times. You can plan for different things to happen, but there's ultimately only one outcome. Being ahead of the game and ready for different outcomes can really help change the pace of a game though. Even though we didn't win, this was one of the few games that I can confidently say that I played pretty well. I'm glad I could share this game with you, and hopefully you guys were able to learn something from my plays. With that, much love guys, and have a good one.